Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Ben the Human Plays Vagris the Riven Realms. We're in Tectum Carvos now. We wandered down from HR to Tectum Carvos just because I figured it was boring to watch me cross the desert. And literally nothing happened. So there you go. <laughs> we do have the... I, I brought the Overseer with me. I want to go to Prince Kareem, brought supplies. We have an overseer with us. We do indeed introduce their new, newest overseer. He wanted to go to Torzeg Shelter. Instead, we're leaving him here in the worm hellhole. Although the overseer was not planning to come and work here, the prince makes them a generous offer that they feel they cannot refuse. The crawl's cruel looking soldiers also help make up their minds. They have an accord. There you go. Your contribution to the defenses is much appreciated by the prince and the crawl. And the new recruits join up with the city defenders after their wages are worked out. We brought something else. We have 182. You need 400 or less? I thought it was 360 before. Well, we don't have that. We have 182. Which means that guy gave them like 14 more. I think we were at like 168 the last time we looked. So, uh, good luck, guys. I hope you have fun. Set out. I'm assuming we'll probably run into more worms on the way out of here. Although we did fight them on the way to HR, so maybe maybe that's enough, uh, enough time between battles that, that we'll be able to get out of here without too much worm harassment. I don't know. Oh, the f what the hell? <laughs> Is just some random undead wandering around the the wasteland? Let's just roast and toast these guys. Makeshift barricade, does that even move the needle? It does not. So let's go for a flank, which gives us more chance of critical success. And then we'll call their ranks. And uh, there are a total of eight of them. A couple of them don't even have heads or hands, so we'll see how this goes. It should be pretty easy. He says before anything majorly bad happens. Good shot. Nadir hit the two. He blocked and still took four damage. Is impressive. I don't know if these guys can be stunned. Crit is great. Harvick slash the one in front of you. And I wonder if Garrick has enough to kill this guy. Sure enough, a crit will do the job. Oh, he punched me. And then he moved forward. All right, go ahead and reload. I don't know if we'll need it, but we can try. Uh, we'll drop the rune under this guy's feet. Shoot him. And then poke him. And then I think the rune will take care of you, so we'll leave you alone. Harvick, go ahead and slash. Oh, I should have kicked him now that I think about it. Because if he had been moved back to the back row, he wouldn't have been able to attack. But what are you going to do? All right, Rune took care of that guy. He's been, he's been vaporized from existence. Elani, go ahead and... Oh, the hawk ripped his head off. Easy peasy. Six of... Or four of them down. All right, no problem. Nobody even got wounded other than I think Harvick got punched a couple times. <laughs> Successfully warded them off. Go ahead and let our people heal if if they heal. And we got a bone and some money for our trouble. All right. It's not the kind of fight I was expecting, but much easier to deal with than the worms for sure. Boost our movement a little bit. Rest. Send our guys out back into the with in into the weather <laughs> into the wasteland. <laughs> Generate some vigor. Failed, but that's okay. And then I think now that we've reached Vitrar, we should be safe from the worms. I think. Jade. Uh, I got the jade from. Oh yeah, you you guys saw. We got the jade from the village. Let's sell it here. I think that's pretty valuable. Ten, it's basically ten bros. So that's fun. For nothing. And we should probably rest here just to be able to generate vigor for free. People go into Avernum. We'll take you. We're heading to Devon as well. So let's just, we're just take in all the passengers. Hire one new fighter to keep up with the growing amount of people we have in our crew. 12 days should be fine. Although we probably should... How far away are you? Four days away is not that much. 
Maybe one. <laughs> we'll leave it be. Let's see. Do you guys have a blessing? Because we've been blessed by the, the Wind Tribe, and we've been blessed by the Earth Tribe now. So, let's petition to visit the Shamans. We've, we've met them before. Ask for their blessing? Yes, cool. The shamans discuss this briefly among themselves. The, then one of them, an elder shaman, turns to you. You have not yet been in initiated by the water spirit, and so you are not yet a close friend of the Vitrar. If that is your wish, if you want our blessing, prove to us that you are worthy. Take on the trial of the waters, something that the members of our tribes do frequently. Would you be willing to do this? We take on the trial. You tell the shamans that you will take up the trial of the waters. There is a murmur of approval that washes over the gathering in the hall. There is something that you could help us with more than anyone else, wanderer, an old shaman tells you. One of our own, a well-respected shaman known for her unusual methods, has gone into the writhing oasis to be our eyes in that dreadful place. It is on the edge of our lands and shunned by our people, but she was adamant to seek it out, to see if a threat has arisen there. Perhaps it was clairvoyance, because she has failed to return for a long time now. Her name is Denikar. Find her. She must be have built a shelter nearby. Place this outside her shelter. Otherwise, she will not reveal herself. If she is alive. You get, they give you a small effigy made of blue feathers and dried plants. Come back to us when you learn what happened, the old shaman tells you. Taking the effigy and nodding, you begin to plan a journey in your head when a younger shaman puts her hand on your shoulder and adds, Be wary, wanderer. The spirits of that place went mad. Do not enter the oasis unless you know exactly what you're doing. You tell the shamans that you will look into this carefully. Leave the shaman's presence. Rest by the lakes. Got some morale, lost some movement. But we were gonna stay here anyway, so that's fine. And, uh... Don't work, because I don't need to lose more vigor. Sleep on the ground. And now we will leave. How far away is the writhing oasis? Oh, it's kind of that way. We have promised them to look into it. We will look into it eventually. But for now, let's uh, get our people to where they want to go. Success! Woohoo! I'm thinking... Go ahead and... I'm thinking we want to pop into Udvarar and see what the Trial of Fire is as well, because I assume there's one. It's going to take like a day, essentially, to do that, but that's fine. Go to the Shaman's Hall. Ask for a blessing. The Shamans discuss this briefly, then one of them, an older Shaman, turns to you. You are not yet touched by the Fire Spirit, and so not yet the friend of the Udvarar. If that is what your wish is you want to our blessing prove to us that you are worthy take on the trial of flame something that our warriors do at an early age would you be willing to do this take on the trial you tell the shamans you will take up the trial of flame there's a murmur of approval that washes over the gathering in the hall first prove your metal to the village a sh female shaman a female shaman steps up to address you although this blessed ground is not threatened by the burrow or horrors we heard we hear sad tales from the other tribes everyone who destroys the abhorrent na unnatural creatures is a friend to all sadirar you be agree to bring them a dozen trophies of the sandworms that's not a problem we already have them <laughs> <laughs> you the conclave rejoices upon this we've just been carrying these carcasses of the sandworms around with us upon the sight of the gruesome trophies they even sing a song of victory in your name then a young shaman presents you with a red feather attached to a piece of carved obsidian you are ready to walk the path and seek the true trial oh damn that wasn't even the real trial Seek the true trial. Take this and pass between the two lakes to the northwest of us, the ones you call Lake Gehennis and Fl Flame Tear Lake. Oh, we talked about that on the last episode. I was like, I wonder why you would go up between the lava lakes. The old shaman draws. Oh, draws. You will come upon a ridge and there you will find our, our Atukotra, the exiled shamans who serve as judges of the trial. Show them the effigy and they will lead you to the path. Walk it with compassion and persistence and courage. Fire spirits will see your worthiness then. You take the effigy and tell them that you shall return. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Let's head out. Head to Avernum. 
we will go we will take care of the fire one and the water one at another day but for now I want to continue on our journey so we'll head back to Avernum or not back but head to Avernum head over to Devon and then the plan is to uh, hit Ren's mission along the way so he's this is his mission up here dark knowledge I'd like to hit there before we go to Devon and then once we hit Devon I'd like to go back to the crossroads uh, and make our way uh, back to the bronze desert I think that would be fun so that's the tentative plan for now though we're gonna rest Ren has healed and we will reach the city approach the guards you have nothing to hide don't pay our taxes use our friends for collateral drop off all the people we have just carting around with us for some reason <laughs> and then uh exchange some news Torze, crimson gate Nar larnak we're not heading any any of those places all right organize our inventory the carpenters guild still doesn't like me and i don't know how to help them <laughs> Let's see, so near the Writhing Oasis, 153, not a super difficult fight, but defending is always kind of annoying. Ash is a good one, so let's take that. We're not going, well, we could go to Torzeg Shelter. It, like, we could go to Devon and then to Torzeg's after just to get that extra money but let's see what else is available larnac lots of larnac all right it's literally the only thing left oh i'd rather not <laughs> but it's not super far beyond the crossroads so maybe it's a good idea devon's only nine days away all right let's do it let's take the torz egg shelter mission full of full of metal here Let's get uh, extra supplies. We have five movement. I think we should just head out. Let's explore the city. Go for a walk. Uh, you climb the stairs and terraces that lead up to the higher tier of the city. It is quite tough in the choking smog, yet pays off when the murky, musky scent of mushrooms hits your nose. Opening from a side street is one of the entrances to the public gardens of Avernum. You decide to take a walk and clear your head. Winding pathways create a veritable maze among the trunks of great mushrooms that stand thick as trees of a forest. Under the canopy of their caps, the soothing gloom is only broken by a well-placed crystal lamp along the cobbled paths. It is like stepping into another world. There is no drifting ash, nor the clamor of the city. The air is cool and not as dry as out in the streets. You sit down in one of the gazebos and ruminate for an hour. It is almost tranquil here. You are in good mood after you rest at the gardens, and it radiates to the others. The smoke paints the darkening skies. Not today. Uh, cool. Uh, we will leave and head out. Goodbye. All right. We are going to... We should probably hit Amphalot on the way out, I think. Yes, let's go here, because this is 3-3 three, three instead of 3-4. Rest in the wasteland. Harvick is healed. Almost to Amphalot. One of these days we'll get out of this twilight and then we can move our full 12, which would be great. Maybe we'll be able to find like a better lamp one of these days as well. I'm not sure if that's a thing that exists or not. We can pop into Amphalot and get a little, a few more supplies since they're cheap here as well. And we will leave. I can't remember if the, the Saudi Rar stuff was in the game before. Uh, we will leave an offering of coins. It, and if it was, I, I must not have just asked the shamans the right things because I feel like I asked them like for a blessing or, or just like interacted with them before and they were like, go away. So maybe it's a newer thing that the devs added. Um, otherwise, if not, too bad I missed it before because there's some neat, neat blessings that you can get. 
like with the blessing of the wind being able to run around really fast and uh the blessing of the earth just giving you free money essentially pretty cool all right we've reached ash we have a mission to turn in and now mission to devon that is fine we will put the illegal stuff in our hidden compartment more illegal stuff in the hidden compartment you go and that's it so seven days how far away is devon from here six to eight and we would like to hit dark knowledge so let's buy all the supplies you have it's expensive but that's fine. That gives us a lot of leeway. And then let's just head out. Alright. So it's between Ash and Sunrock. It's closer to Sunrock, though. So maybe we get, like, a day out from Sunrock and then just head due north? We'll try it. So we go down and then back up. And then, like, right here at this node, I feel like we should deviate from the the road we'll try our best hey perfect perfect distance okay so now we will go north and rest all right i'm gonna save real quick just because i feel like i get lost going out into the desert a lot but we should go due north from here Hold on. <laughs> the air from the open desert is incredibly hot, and today it grows even hotter, though you would not have thought this possible. Soon you find out why. From the direction the Komitatis is headed, the infamous winds of the wasteland come up and grow within a matter of minutes into a tremendous unceasing gale. Thank Luckily, it is not strong enough to whip up a full-blown dust storm, sandstorm, but it, it, it makes getting ahead extremely difficult nonetheless. You and your comies find yourself almost knee-deep in swirling sand and struggling with every single step. Even your beasts press themselves at an angle against the windstorm. Analyzing the direction of the gales, you find an angle that makes it somewhat easier to press on. Oh, okay, that wasn't so bad. I thought something horrible was going to happen to us. All right. A little further, it looks like it's, like, up in this area. And, unfortunately, it doesn't really look like there's any obvious way to go. So we're going to guess. All right, so due north from here. How about into the here? Oh, dang it. What are you guys doing camping out here? <laughs> I was so excited for a second. All right, we're right in the middle of it. Oh, I bet it's this place. You see that? I wish I hadn't done this weird little jog, but I bet it's this little node right here because it's off on its own. All right, uh, we will camp. I'm making a bet. Going up. Oh, it's not off on its own. I'm a liar. And we're out of the thing. Oh, shoot. All right, hold on. I'm going to pause, and I'm going to come back when I've found the location. Hold on. I found it. So we, we were right here. I moved up here. It is right at this node. So we're going to camp first. Uh, make sure we're we've got as high of stance as we can get. And then go in. Ta-da! The outline of the sand-chiseled, half-buried runes looms in the not-too-far distance in the arid, jagged wasteland. Ren Kylon consults his research notes and nods. Yes, this must be it. Can't be anything else. <laughs> it's gone from Australian to English again. He says at last, There's a good reason to assume that we'll find information regarding life drain in there. Indeed, it could be the old dark elven settlement called Nagradath. Abandoned by its original builders, then settled by humans who apparently met a dark end sometime later. Obviously, the whole Komitatis is too large to enter the ruins, so you'll have to choose carefully whom of your companions to take along. Ren Kailan is required. We will gather a party and approach the ruins. We can only take five. Okay. So... I think I would rather take... Nadir... Harvik... Ren... Gorgoro. I'd love to take Krifta as well, but only five kind of... It's better to have, like, three frontliners. <laughs> uh, like these three. 
and then and uh, or sorry, Gorgoro these two, and then Nadir and Ren. Um, then having two frontliners and a uh, and, and somebody exposed when they really shouldn't be. I think this will work. Can we upgrade Harvick yet? Nope. He doesn't trust me enough. We didn't we like kill somebody at Tectum Carbos? I thought that would help us out. Anyway, <laughs> we'll call, confirm those five. Your party reaches the first half buried buildings, and after a short while, you find yourself in an almost tunnel-like descending streets. Soon you're ca you enter chasms to go constantly down, but are still open to the light above. The place is largely empty and overflown with sand, but there are some signs of habitation from decades ago. Stone shelves and broken jugs line the walls, broken tools lie on the ground, while faded clothing is rippling in the draft. Take your time to examine the place and see if you can find something of interest or value. You sift through the shelves and receptacles to find a few items of value. Then suddenly you hear a vicious hissing sound, like that of an attacking reptile. Then there's a flash of white light. One of your companions screams briefly. As you turn to look, you find your Kome is looking pale and is sweating prof profoundly, but otherwise seems fine. Some sort of wa warding hex, I... I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Some sort of warding hex, I presume. Renkylon rubs his chin. Lost most of its power, likely weakened during the long, re long decades, but still... Your affected companions still feel a, a little sick for some time. There's nothing to do about that now. Push deeper. Ah, oh, Nadir's been enfeebled. I don't know what that means. <laughs> you, soon you leave the surface runes and descend into dark, cold tunnels, stretching beneath tons of rock. You got marble. Lots of cool stuff, though. And good quality tools. But uh, an uneasing feeling creeps up on you and you shiver. There's an intangible, oppressive sensation sitting in the stagnant air. The architecture is undoubtedly dark elven, Ren Kylon states after examining your surroundings, but quite an old and fallen de decay. Many people left this place a long time ago, but it didn't remain abandoned. Look. He points out crudely handmade furniture and primitive scripture on the wall, obviously the work of some wasteland dwelling tribe that made its home here long after the dark elves were gone. There must be a place dedicated to knowledge here, Ren Kylon continues. A vault. A hall of records, a library, something like that. I hope these savages haven't ransacked or defiled it. I certainly do. You begin a thorough search of the surrounding tunnels. Let's increase our chance. Oh, we spread out to examine the corridors carefully. Unfortunately, caution alone is not enough. These underground runes have endured merciless pressure of many, many tons of sand and debris for decades, and thus their structure is weakened. Without warning, a piece of floor collapses, and with a dull rumble, most of you manage to jump to safety, but one of your companions is not so lucky. Taking a fall of several feet and landing with a painful oof, it takes some time to get your battered comies out of that hole. Ah, oh, man, Harvick got hurt. <laughs> We're just getting beat to crap. Oh. Okay. The search takes quite long takes quite long as the tunnels are extensive, but at length you hear the voice of one of your comies calling out to you. Following it, you come upon a vaulted side chamber where old stone tablets are stacked against the walls among shelves containing rows of ancient books, all neatly kept. Ren Kylon becomes agitated right away. Yes, he whispers. These are dark elven records, and rather on and rather surprisingly, he lifts one of the books from the shelf. Look how well preserved they are. Human settlers weren't savages after all. Maybe they ch tried to learn from them. It appears that they were especially interested in scripture. Why would he become agitated? <laughs> he asks you for some time so he can quickly review the find. You settle in for a long wait while the Dark Elf Scout does his work. You must have dozed off in the cool damp air, for the next thing you know is an agitated Ren Kylon shaking you by the shoulder. Hey, Vagras, come now, listen. You ask him what is happening while trying to clear your senses. We've heard something outside the chamber. Dark Elf, the Dark Elf Scout explains in a hushed voice, but, and not only that, but I sense something dark, something sinister. Can you not feel it? A pet, alarmingly, when you focus, you can. It feels like the same oppressing force that you've sensed when you entered the runes, but much stronger this time, almost suffocatingly powerful. The sense of dread accompanying, accompanying it is almost overwhelming. You command your crew to follow you outside and look for the menace's source. You do not know what is coming. You fortify yourself inside the room where it will be easier to defend yourself. Let's do that. There's a moment of silence and a proverbial calm before the storm. Then you hear the shuffling of dry-skinned feet and the hissing of rotting throats outside the record chamber. There must be dozens of undead out there, seemingly having appeared out of nowhere. Those foolish humans must have called some dark presence and paid the price. 
Ren Kylon spurts out while going frantically through the scrolls and books. Maybe I can draw it out, make it reveal itself somehow. This might be our only chance and our sole chance at salvation. You tell the tell the Dark Elf Scout to hurry as the undead threaten to over you on uh, any minute. He begins an incantation. While you and your companions try to hold back the undead at the entrance arch, Ren Kylon chants in a low voice and pants and paints sorcerous signs into the air with his nimble fingers. Slowly and threateningly, a shadowy shape begins to form in one of the chamber's upper corners. It writhes and thrashes like a bird caught in a net, as if fighting some unseen force. It loses the fight. Suddenly, there's a popping sound, and the, and the shadow takes on a physical shape, and it falls to the ground. It is a horned, dark-skinned, toothy imp that almost immediately jumps at you. <laughs> as you whirl around to face it, some of the undead make it into the room, too. You must stand your ground, beset on two fronts. Oh, this guy's nothing. We've killed, like, tons of you. <laughs> Nadir has, uh, herself murdered many of your, your kind. Uh, let's move Nadir to the middle and Ren to the far side. And this will allow Harvick to bounce back and forth like we like to do with him. All right, Ren's up first. Let's go for the demon. I have to imagine the... Ah, that sucks. The, uh, skeletons are not as dangerous. Let's try and stun it as well. Did not work. His evasion is probably pretty high. Good hit. Harvick, uh, go for the slash. And you killed him, fantastic news. Burn. A miss is not what I wanted to see. That miss is, is what I wanted to see. Uh, go for another stun. Maybe they can't be stunned, they are undead. Let's kick you to the back. Good. Front row. Man, you can't hit anything. <laughs> I shouldn't uh, be so cocky. Wow, amazing. All right, double burn. She can't hit the back row for some reason. That's fine. Good crit. He hit me and I still didn't get harmed. Amazing. Middle guy? Oh, he's still alive. Unfortunate. All right, kill that guy. He blocked it, what the hell? Burn? Still can't hit the back row. Or the front row, I guess it is. Now all of you get to take your turn. We took some damage, finally. It was bound to happen. You used a crit on a guy with one, one HP? How could you do this? Uh, just finish him off. Oh, man. <laughs> Just finish him off. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. Uh, go ahead and drop the rune. Does that take away his his caltrops? I guess that's got the guy's not moving, so doesn't really matter. Dagger is great. Uh, go ahead and make it harder to miss. And then Nadir, you should probably be able to finish him off. Fantastic. <laughs> Good job. The demonic creature screams in infernal agony, then disappears into nothingness in the blink of an eye. Simultaneously, the hordes of undead outside the vault are rendered motionless and collapse to the floor. You have won. That wasn't too bad. Hope that would work, Ren Kylon says, panting. Now let's finish going through these records. You join him while he continues examining the books. As you go through the parchments, you find clues pointing to the human settlers finding solace in demon worship that they learned from the dark elven scriptures they found in the vault. Apparently, the reason for this drastic change of faith were the harshness of the wasteland, which the tribe failed to overcome even here. They Then they probably made communion with a malevolent being, the results of which you have seen. Yes, there are some writings here that can help me. Ren Kylon says while he packs up everything he deigns useful. The rest he passes on to you. Once I can examine them thoroughly, uh, once I have time to decipher them, that is. It is as if he was completely oblivious to what you just experienced. Help him finish packing and leave this accursed place. By the time you exit the runes, the dust has settled. dusk has settled. You return to the Komitatas, strike camp, and prepare for a night of rest. He has gained loyalty, we got insight, a day, <laughs> bone carvings, ancient tablets, and a demon horn. Awesome. Well, that went really well. I thought maybe like some demons would come accost us in the night, but apparently not. All right, back to the road at hand. We have six days of supplies. I think we should be able to get to Sunrock. Yeah, it's like three days away, maybe two. Everybody's healing up. Really? <laughs> you guys are not like, you're so much weaker than I am. All right, let's defend. 
You could come come attack me? How how could you do this? Call their ranks. I was gonna end the episode just by going to Sunrock, but apparently you guys had other ideas. Twenty-one? And you're already weak for some reason. Alright, well anyway, we're gonna try our best here. A squad. Good rolls for initiative. Six is fine. Ah, you missed. I thought they got to, when they did slice and dice, they got to attack twice. Apparently not. Maybe that's a different creature that looks kind of like an orc mercenary. You're still alive, but you will bleed to death? Do I want to let you move? Maybe you're already attacked, I'm not sure. Just go for the front row, people. Elani, go ahead and poke him. They don't seem that tough. Ah, that's what I thought they would do. Holy God, how many moves do you get? What the fuck? <laughs> He attacked like six times! Charging shove? We're being charged shoved everywhere. Alright, rush forward. Smash this guy in the face with your axe. Good shot. Oh, I forgot they have like their like don't die move. Kill him. Alright, he's dead. Reload. Send out fire. Fire and brimstone. We can lock him at the back row. Although I thought he would have been able to throw a javelin back there. But anyway. Try for a stun. A stun did not happen. That's fine. I don't think they had any armor, but... Stop slicing and dicing my half orc, you jerk. I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> for your insolence. Good shot. Well done. Burn. Ah, rats. Alright, we've got some... War... How do you have three warband leaders? I guess you're a bruiser, and then there's a leader. They look the same. How do I tell them apart? Uh, go for the weak guy. He's dead. Fantastic news. Oh, he's not dead. I thought he died. How are you still alive? Is it your ability to, uh... Not die? Perhaps? I don't trust that rune. Ever since it betrayed me. There we go. Go for the cleave attack. And then let's go for the ruin again. You can't block the ruin. It's under your feet. Aha, suck it. There you go, three damage. Go for the arrow spell. Another ruin, please. Poke him. Shoot him. And then stab him. He will maybe die? He did not. He has his his save yourself spell. <laughs> and then there we go. That wasn't so bad. Took a bit of bit of damage from the whole fight, all in all. Got a couple of guys roughed up. Retreating, organized, well trained. Did they take anything from me? Let's double check. We did succeed. They grabbed a bronze. That is bad news. You cannot take that from me because uh I'm I, I was willing to eat fighters at that because I owe that the bronze to the the people <laughs> that that uh the faction that that hired me to transport that stuff. I lost a scout? You know, I'm totally okay with that. We gained some metal and we gained some hide too, which is pretty cool. All right, now back to Sunrock like I originally intended. Let's rest up. All y'all heal a little bit. There we go. Might as well send our dudes out to try and gather some stuff. Didn't work, but you never know. All right, and we've reached Sunrock. Good job. We dropped off our people. Uh, Torzeg's Devon, Devon. Okay, cool. So we have a lot of stuff that we could take to Devon. I'll sort that out off camera. If you guys enjoyed the episode, click the like button. It helps me out a lot. If you want to see more Vagris, the Riven Realms, or my other videos going on on the channel, subscribe to the channel. That also helps out a lot. But until next time, everybody, I hope you have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody.